Can you start off by telling us what is a vaccine? So a vaccine is something that protects us against the risk of harmful infection. So in our everyday lives, we, we encounter lots of microorganisms, bacteria, viruses and fungi, and mostly those are harmless. But occasionally, we might encounter something that could cause disease. And so vaccines really are there to protect us against the risk of exposure to harmful uh, bacteria or viruses that could cause disease. Things like uh, Bordetella pertussis, which causes whooping cough, for instance, or influenza virus. And how do vaccines work? So vaccines work by stimulating the immune system in our bodies into a protective mode. Our immune system is made up of many interacting cells and um, very importantly amongst these are the lymphocytes. So the B cells, B lymphocytes produce antibodies which bind uh, bacterial viruses and neutralize them eventually and T lymphocytes uh, produce other factors, factors mainly known as cytokines which assist the, the B cells to produce antibodies and also crucially retain a memory for the infecting pathogen so that if that person encounters that pathogen, that disease-causing organism again, they will be protected. People often mention that herd immunity is one of the main benefits of vaccinations. What is herd immunity um, and why is this so important? So herd immunity is the um, ability to induce in a community um, a protective response uh, so that you kind of ring fence your, your uh, disease-causing organisms. Um, so that you have a, a, a group of people that are protected um, who then cannot transmit the disease to other people who have never encountered it and who might be vulnerable. Therefore, by um, immunising um, people who might be um, at risk of encountering the infection, you protect the community at large. What are examples of um, successful vaccinations that are currently in use? Right, so there are very, very many uh, successful vaccines. Perhaps one of the uh, most successful vaccines has been the smallpox vaccine, which was used in a global eradication campaign, which finished in about 1970, essentially eradicating smallpox globally. Uh, vaccines against measles and against meningitis, Haemophilus influenza B, um, have been used also very successfully to reduce childhood disease. Um, what is the difference between active and passive vaccination? Okay, so with active vaccination you're actually um, actively immunising the person, stimulating their own immune system produ to produce a protective immune response. With passive vaccination you're exploiting that principle of vaccination but you're, take, you're giving the person preformed antibodies. Uh, that have been manufactured on a large scale, possibly, um, as a monoclonal antibody. And um, examples of this um, sort of approach are the various immunotherapies that are being used to treat infection and to uh, con treat conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, where you're trying to reduce the inflammatory response. And uh, monoclonal antibodies are being used to treat these conditions extremely successfully. Passive vaccination also occurs between mother and child. So the fetus can receive antibodies from the mother during the pregnancy and uh, the mother can actually also transmit antibodies, protective antibodies, to the infant in breast milk. Are there any limitations to vaccines? Yes, there are some limitations to vaccines. Clearly, you need to know what uh, you need to vaccinate against to protect a person. That, that's one limitation. Another limitation is against diseases where the organism itself attacks the immune system. And um, a very good example of that is the human immunodeficiency virus, which actually attacks crucial cells in the immune system. So it's been difficult to derive a vaccine for that particular virus, although very promising progress is now being made.